Hello, I am Marla Feller and I'm a professor at the University of California at Berkeley. And I'm Michal Rivlin, I'm a postdoc at Marla's lab. We would like to introduce to you our research done in the paper, Visual Stimulation Reverses the Directional Preference of Direction-Selective Retinal Ganglion Cells. We conduct our research in the retina, which is the neural tissue that lines the back of the eye and is where visual processing begins. Direction-Selectivity is a classic example of a computation performed by a neural circuit. Though photoreceptors are linear reporters of intensity at different sites of the receptive field, retinal circuits perform computations on those intensity signals. These computations converge on the roughly 15 to 20 types of retinal ganglion cells that encode different features of the visual scene. Direction selectivity emerges as an interaction between excitation and inhibition. Excitation provided by bipolar cells and inhibition provided primarily from starburst amacrine cells, which release GABA. In particular, inhibition is thought to play an important role since blockade of GABA-A receptors leads to direction-selective cells responding equally to stimuli moving in all directions. This asymmetric role of inhibition is predicted by the anatomical inputs that starburst amacrine cells make onto direction-selective ganglion cells. My name is Wei Wei, a co-author of the paper. My previous work in Dr. Feller's lab have shown that when a starburst amacrine cell on the now side of a direction-selective ganglion cell is stimulated, a large GABAergic conductance is observed in the ganglion cell. However, when a starburst amacrine cell on the preferred side is stimulated, we observed a weaker GABAergic conductance. This indicates that the circuit is hardwired to provide asymmetric inhibition to direction-selective ganglion cells. We use gratings moving in 12 different directions while we record the spiking activity of the cell. We quantify the responses by the number of spikes evoked during 3 seconds of stimulation. Here's a typical tuning curve of a direction-selective ganglion cell. Responses to 3 repetitions of gratings are shown in gray and the average response is in black. The traces are examples of half a second activity recorded from the cell. The red arrow is the normalized vectorial summation. The longer it is, the more tuned the cell is. The preferred direction of the cell is determined by the direction of this vector. The opposite direction is called the null direction. This is the regular art performed my experiment. The retina is isolated and the tissue is put down here under the objective. We use transgenic mouse lines that label direction selective ganglion cells with GS the GSP. This way we can easily find our direction selective cells. We use two photon microscopy to find GFP expressing cells in order to prevent bleaching of the retina. Here you can see an image of the GFP expression of the retina that is located down there under the objective. I can easily identify the direction selective ganglion cells and target an electrode on them. The visual stimulation is projected via an OLED located here onto the retina via the objective. Motion is encoded throughout the visual pathway and direction-selective cells are found in the visual cortex. Direction-selective cells in the cortex can adapt and reshape their directional tuning following a short repetitive stimulation. Can retinal direction-selective cells adapt as well in response to an ongoing stimulus? Here you see an example of the cell's directional tuning acquired by moving gratings. Next, I adapt the cell using gratings moving towards the preferred direction of the cell for 40 seconds, followed by gratings moving towards the null direction of the cell for 40 seconds. We speculated this adaptation protocol would be most efficient, as the preferred direction stimulation would lead to a decrease in the preferred direction response via depression, while repeated stimulation in the null direction would lead to an increase in the null direction response via training. Next, I obtain the new tuning curve using an additional grading test. As you can see, the cell has reversed its directional preference by 180 degrees. 
This reverse Algol's table and lasted throughout the experiment, here for 23 minutes. A significant aspect of this research is that it demonstrates it's possible to override an anatomical bias and change the computation performed by a neural circuit. However, there are many remaining questions. We are working hard to identify the specific cells and synapses within the retina that mediate this adaptation to motion. What does this mean? This means... What do you think this means? We're not yet sure what this means, but it does suggest that changes in retinal circuits underlie motion adaptation. In any event, it means that we'll still leave many things for you kids to investigate when you'll be a grown-up. We have many people we would like to thank for helping us do this research, our funding agencies, the people who provided us with the mice, and of course the Feller Lab.